There you go, look, it's time me on 20 past five, so I've got about another half an hour left till we get to site. I'm pretty sure if you do a similar job, then you all know about getting up early and beating the staff, um, especially if you're doing maintenance and stuff. So pretty normal procedure to, start to get out of bed early, but um, I don't mind it to be fair. Uh, I don't mind it in the summer. Uh, yeah, we've got about another half an hour, so we'll get on the road. Still drinking way too much coffee. <laughs> Right then, we're doing some maintenance and this system here, so them two are twin together. That one there is showing a low pressure fault on the controller, so what we'll do, we'll uh, take the covers off, we'll put a probe on there, we'll see what the, uh, the actual pressure's reading then. Perhaps there's a good chance I'll show you how I'll go about checking a pressure sensor. Um, so we'll use a smart probe and we'll, um, we'll measure against what the actual pressure sensor's reading. So yeah, we'll whip the covers off and we'll have a look. Oh, I'm not sure if it's going to pick it up on camera, but yeah, whether you can or can't see that, it says address 52, 1301 error, so I'm not sure you can see that to be fair, but a 1301 error, that's a low pressure fault. Um, and obviously it says address 52. So this particular unit here, this is address 52. So what we're gonna do, um, we'll, uh, I'll go on there, look, see that one that says low there. That's right next to our low pressure sensor. So we're gonna put a probe on there. Um, we'll just check what the actual pressure is. What we'll do, we'll use a dip switch um, and then we'll have a look what the unit or what the sensor thinks that the pressure is. Um, if that says zero, and then if our probe also says zero, um, we know there's no refrigerant in here, so we need to uh, look a bit further. <laughs> see there look we've got our testo smart probe this is what i like to use so we've got one of these 549i pressure probes from testo and then we've got one of these valve style adapters i've shown these many times before but um, if i'm going to check pressure sensors and stuff like that that's what i'll use for a quick check um let's see if i can show you but you'll see there look where it says low and where it says high believe it or not that pipe there will go and sit right next to the low pressure sensor. That one there will go back and sit right next to the high pressure sensor. I'll see if I can get you in there. So there you go. That, that thing there, look with the black sort of um, cap over the top, that's our low pressure sensor. Um, so that is what we're checking against. All right then, now on this main control board, you will see this bank of dip switches here. Now, the one on the furthest on the right hand side, you'll see there, look, SW1. That's going to be your best friend if you haven't got the maintenance tool. So if you haven't got the, the software um, to plug your laptop into this, then SW1, you can use that to view loads of different readings. So you can look at the pressure sensors, you can look at thermistors all around the system. You're going to be able to pull off that information then. 
it's basically going to display it on this um, on this display here. So what we'll do first, we'll uh, flick some dip switches and we'll have a look for our low pressure sensor reading. So on this particular unit, it's one, two, four, five, and six on. So you want to flick them little um, them little dip switches into the on position. So we're going to flick one, two, four, five and six and then that then should give us a low pressure read in there which it has again i don't know if you can see this on the camera but it is 0, 0.0 and um, so that sensor's reading zero bar and that's exactly what my smart probe down there is reading that's reading zero bar um, so that's telling us we've got no refrigerant in the system I think on this particular one, if you knock off number one, that will also show you a high pressure sensor. Again, you're not going to be able to see that, but it says 0, 0.0 bar. So yeah, we know there's no refrigerant in that system, but that's how I check um, the high and the low pressure sensor. So if you're doing a maintenance, you want to check them because they do fail. Um, not all the time, but I've had some fail on different systems. If you basically hook up a probe like this, or your gauge, manifold, um, whatever you've got, and you basically track the pressure, so let's just say that said five bar, you wanna make sure that your, um, your low pressure sensor saying five bar on there as well, and then you can watch it go up and down, and just make sure that it's following closely. So we've isolated both of these. Obviously we know, um, we know there's no refrigerant left. And I have had a look everywhere that I can think so I've had a look in these outdoor units, um, all around the edge of the coil. Uh, I've had a look at the check valves, sort of in there, make sure nothing's split in there. There's absolutely no signs of oil anywhere around these units. Um, I spoke to the customer and believe it or not, I wasn't even aware that it wasn't working. So apparently this must have only happened over the past sort of day or two because there was no error codes flashing everywhere. Um, so it must be a substantial leak somewhere. It's not like it's gonna be a little slow leak over time. I'll look after this kit and check it frequently. And um, yeah, so that'd be an interesting one. Obviously we're gonna need to get some nitrogen in here pump it up and then we can have a we can have a close look so hopefully um, if we get this repair then I'll bring you guys back and we'll have a look exactly where this is leaking from while I'm packing this away I've got a couple of new 12 volt goodies from Milwaukee uh, as you see there look 12 volt I'm going to try this instead of the um, instead of the drill so because this fits handy in the uh in the tool bag yeah so i'm i'm, uh, I'm loving that so far because it's nice and easy to carry to be fair and then i'm hoping that's going to come in handy just for some light repair work and then we got this i reckon you've probably all seen this but this is the uh 12 volt dab digital radio and believe it or not, I've never ever had a radio for work, so uh, usually because I find they're just too big. And then this thing's uh, making the days go a bit better. So yeah, anyway, I'm going to put these uh, put these covers back on, and we'll see if we can find something else to look at. I forgot to say that the control on this thing is uh, yeah, you can put as much or as little force as you want with that um, and it's not overly powerful so hopefully the next person will be able to to get them off
that there is one of the things I absolutely hate about this thing. For some reason, I still haven't got around to cutting these off. I don't know if any of you guys have got this. Are these not the most annoying things ever? They're just not wide enough to clamp onto the terminals properly. I think I'm a daikin one. I, they don't come with any uh, crocodile clips, so I ended up buying some bigger ones and just soldering them on the end. But, oh, I need to get rid of these. Right then, I thought I'd show you something else. So most of you are probably already aware of this if you work on this kit, but we're going to have a look at some more Mitsubishi electric kit. Obviously, you'll see there, look, we've got a cassette-type unit. And if you're a service engineer, you probably experience this a lot. So let's just say you've got someone sitting there and then they're getting a draft from that direction, um, constantly complaining that they're getting a draft blown down the neck. Um, they've probably tried to sell a type, that louver shut. Um, same with some of the other ones. It's just a constant battle. You never please everyone, but uh, if you are sitting in the in the line of fire, sometimes it's uh, not the greatest place to be. So there is something you can do about it. Um, if we head on over to the controller, If you've got a controller that looks like this, um, hit that menu button there, and then if you scroll to maintenance, we're going to hit that maintenance, and then you'll see in the middle there, look, manual vein angle. So if we hit that, that's going to, it should start opening up the louvers on the units. As you can see there. And then it's going to ask you which Mnet address of the unit it is you want to adjust. So I'm going to go for number five, which I think is that unit over there. So I'm going to hit the tick. It's going to say monitoring, and then it's going to give you this display. So you'll see there, look, one, two, three, four. Uh, I can't remember for the life of me which is which, but if you, let's just say we go on number two, and let's just say, we'll open that one up, number three, we'll open that one up as wide as it goes. If you keep the tick, it's gonna say setting, and then I'm hoping that these veins are gonna open up. So that is obviously two and three. So at the moment, them two there, look, they're open as wide as they can go. And them two there, look, they're closed. So, um, yeah, like I said, if you've got someone sitting there, perhaps you want to put that one as high up as it can go, you can, and then you can leave the other ones um alone so we'll try that see if we can lift that one up so i think it's got number two so we put that one back to no setting go back to number two and then that's the highest that we can raise that louver so we'll hit the tick we'll see it'll say setting hopefully i've picked the right one There you go, look, that one's closing. That one's closing. No, I picked the wrong one. But you get the idea. So that one now will sit at its highest position. And then them three will just open up uh, whatever position you've got them set on the controller. So you can have all four of these louvers in different positions if needs be. Obviously, once you've done your... Once you've um, made your setting, you're just going to press the tick. Sorry, you're going to press the return, and then it'll say, please wait, completing maintenance. That's going to save the settings for that unit. So every time that unit switches on now, it doesn't matter what you put in the louver settings on this controller, 
that one louver will always stay at its highest position so it has helped me out on a number of occasions to be fair um just something handy to know right then there's one more thing you can do because as you know you can put that louver to the highest position but sometimes it's just not enough they'll only go up so far so you can if you want completely shut that louver and you can do that by taking off the corner panel and then you'll see there look that's a louver motor just there so make sure you turn the unit off first you don't want to be unplugging this while the unit's live so turn the unit off give that get that plug out it can be a bit tight and then what you want to do get some electrical tape around that plug and then you can tuck it up in there and then if you want to leave that closed you can leave it closed you can also open that to your own position um, i think it's got to be within a certain angle though um, which i think it's in the manual um, but if you want to leave that closed you can leave that closed like i said just put some electrical tape around there tuck it up you can put all this back together and then what you need to do you need to go to the controller and you need to tell this unit that it's now a three-way unit instead of a four-way unit um, so we'll pop the power on and I'll, uh, I'll show you how you do that it is going to depend on the model number of your indoor unit as whether you do it on the controller or via the dip switches inside the unit so on this particular unit uh, what you want to do is get inside the electrical uh, electrical compartment and then don't know if you can see but up on the side of them two capacitors sort of up there there's a little bank of dip switches so i think it's sw21 um see if we can see it on here look so there it is like sw21 you'll see you got one to six if you look in the manual there's um there's a diagram or a table and it'll show you the position you need to put them dip switches Depending on um, how many of the louvers you've got open and closed and your ceiling height, so you can change for sort of um, high ceilings and normal ceilings. I know on some of the older kit, basically it's in the function settings on the controller, you can either tell this unit to two way, a three way, or a four way, but um, yeah, it's, it's on them, that little bank of dip switches there. It does say in the manual as well, you can buy um, like a shutter plate. Um, so when you do shut that, you can put some sort of plate on. I've never used one. I've never even seen one, to be fair. But um, Yeah, like I say, I'm sure a lot of you probably already know this, but um, you know how many complaints we get for uh, people getting drafts when they're sitting by a unit. So uh, that might come in handy for some of you if you've never done that before. All right, then. These are some of the units that we've got. Um, these are some of the new units. So we've got three, three city multis. Obviously these are N series units. So we've got Y, NWAs. Um, I'm gonna give these, well, you'll see they're pretty clean anyway, but uh, we're gonna give them a maintenance wash just to keep on top of them and uh yeah i'll flick a probe on i'll flick a probe on that one i'll show you the uh pressure sensor we'll, we'll actually track it um, against one with some pressure in so uh let me give these a quick clean and then we'll put the probe on there posted about this on my instagram last week um i don't know if any of you guys use these but it's basically a snow foam gun so you can see look I usually just put some degreaser in, spray all the casings with this. You can put it on the coil as well, like that. It's not designed to like push anything out, but it's just designed to help that chemical just stick to the coil. So if there is anything, hopefully it will loosen it up. I'm not doing a, a deep clean on any of these, by the way. It's just a maintenance wash, so they are they are pretty clean anyway. So I'm not pushing anything through. I'm just taking off any sort of surface. So if you stir and washing it all off, um, yeah, just do it little and often on a maintenance to be fair. So we'll uh, we'll give these a wash in and then uh, we'll get that probe on. This is the other thing that I wanted to show you. So uh, I'm lucky, I've got a tap out there. So we've got the hose rigged up at the moment, but usually we haven't got a tap. So um, 
this is what I'll use. Uh, you've probably all seen this. this is the Works Hydro Shot uh, battery powered pressure washer. But you'll see there, look, I've now got a Milwaukee battery sitting on that. So we've got this like adapter plate in the middle. Um, I'm pretty sure Works or Milwaukee do not endorse this, but I got that from eBay. Um, it come from China. Now, with that battery on, this is much, much better. So, uh, yeah, well worth checking them out if you're using these uh, Works pressure washers. <laughs> There you go, look, so I've just banged that. That's on the low pressure port. Uh, like I said, this is a, uh, these are N series units. So slightly different to what I showed you earlier on. SW4, which is like over there. Um, that's what you want to be adjusting. So I don't know whether you can see that, but it says 10.1. The unit is just about to fire up. It's just started hammering down with rain. Of course it has. So you're probably not going to be able to see that, but that's now going down. So 9.4, 9.3, 9.2. Basically, as that goes up and down, just log into your app um, or, or look at your manifold. And you just want to be tracking whatever that's saying and match it to whatever that's saying. So uh, I'm just going to log onto the, my app now and then I'll just watch the, uh, I'll watch the probe, follow the uh, sensor. Just make sure, if you look in the manual, it'll tell you what it's supposed to be. It might be like 0.1 or 0.2 of a bar. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do that. It's starting to hammer down now, so I'm gonna get these cases back on quick. Right then, I'm gonna end the video there. Uh, got a few more of these to, to go and clean, so. As always, massive thank you for watching. If you could, please so kind as to smash the like button if you like the video. Subscribe if you wanna see some more. Um, I know it's been a while, I am sorry. I've had a couple of weeks off work. Then we were off, caught COVID, so we had to isolate for 10 days. Um, then I did a video and accidentally deleted it, so I'm still new to the whole YouTube thing, so you'll have to bear with me. But uh, again, massive thank you if you've uh, made it to the end, and I'll uh, catch you on the next one.